All right, then uh, welcome back everyone. So let's solve this question. Jagged swaps. Let me read out the question for you. You are given a permutation A of size N. Now what is a permutation? A permutation is an array consisting of N distinct integers from 1 to N in arbitrary order. For example, 23154 uh, is a permutation, but 122 is not a permutation. So in simple words, uh, what is a permutation is, uh, if the permutation size is N, uh, permutation will contain a uh, uh, will contain the elements or elements permutation just an array uh, with elements 1 to n in any order right so if you have a permutation of size 5 it simply means you have an array which contains elements 1 to 5 1 2 3 4 5 it's just the order can be anything right if your permutation of size 6 uh, you have an array of size 6 and the elements are 1 2 3 4 5 6 it just uh, the order can be anything it can be any arbitrary order i hope uh, the definition of permutation is clear you can do the following operation select a index i from 2 to n minus 1 such that ei greater than uh, ei minus 1 and ei is greater than ei plus 1 swap ei with ei plus 1 so it seems like uh, the array is uh, one indexed okay because uh, here also i am seeing an input uh, they are referring uh, ei is from 1 to n find no issues with that but i guess they are say considering the array to be a one index based and what they are saying is we can do this operation in our array so permutation array i already explained right so permutations definition is simply a uh, if the permutation size is n, we have an array of size n with integers 1 to n in any order. So if we are allowed this operation, what is the operation? Select an index from 2 to n minus 1. Basically select uh, any index from second uh, to the second last and uh, such that uh, you can take any index and if this is uh, this condition is followed, that is ai, if you select index, let's say 2, and it is greater than both of its neighbors, ai is greater than a minus 1, ai is greater than a plus 1. So if, an, if at a, the element at a given index is greater than its both of the neighbors, that's what this is saying, we can swap ei and ei plus 1. Right, so this is uh, like this. If you have an element here and it is greater than both of its neighbors, this element can come here. Right, so this element can move move ahead. It can basically bubble up to the next next cell of the array. Determine whether it is possible to sort the permutation after finite number of operations. Right, so basically what they're saying is you are given a permutation, you are given an array with the properties that we just defined, uh, with the properties that we just defined, and we are allowed only this operation. That is, if a uh, this operation is also allowed from the second element to the last element, a uh, second last element. So if a, a, if an element is greater than both of its neighbors, then you can just move it to the next cell. If a is greater than a minus one and a plus one, we can move it to the position. We can swap it with a plus one, basically. Determine whether it is possible to sort the permutation. Basically, can we sort the array? That's what it's asking. The input says uh, each test case contains uh, multiple test cases. Okay, fine. So first line of input is number of test cases. This will always happen. Then uh, first line of each test case con consists of single integer n. So permutation of at least size 3 is given and the permutation size is varying from 3 to 10, no problem in that. And second n contains uh, n integers, a1, a2, n, so elements of permutation. So basically you know anyway the elements, have, elements are from 1 to n, but what is the order is provided by this second line. For each test case, print yes, if it is possible to sort the permutation, no otherwise. So if you can, uh, after performing finite number of such operations, uh, sort the array, return yes, like basically print yes or print no. Fine, uh, let's understand uh, this test cases. Uh, understand this test cases in sublime. So here I've copied down the test cases for you firstly. So firstly, let me just take the input and then we can understand the question, right? So first, uh, anyway, I've taken the test cases input. Then first line of input is uh, n, the size of the permutation. And um, the next line is uh, the array itself, right? The permutation, basically. So let's take the input array i equals 0, i less than n, i plus plus c n, array of i. Fine. So input is taken. Now let, let's try to understand uh, what is going on here? So which input should I take? Uh, let's take this input. Let's take this input. So basically n is 5. So we have a permutation of size 5. 1 to 5 elements are present in any order. So what uh, what is our move that is allowed? So let's just uh, say uh, we are just dealing with one index arrays. Fine here we are we have zero index arrays. But no issues it will make the explanation maybe a little bit easier here. So where was I? Yeah. We can do one move right. So for any index i index i uh, in 2 to n minus 1 uh, if basically a i uh, is like this if a i is greater than a i minus 1 and it is greater than a i plus 1 then we can basically swap a i and a i plus 1 so this is the operation that we are allowed so we are given a permutation and this operation is allowed and so basically like some sort of uh, uh, triangle is formed from ei minus 1 to ei plus 1 then we can just swap ei and ei plus 1 fine and this operation uh, it is important to note uh, 
And usually in A-rated question, what happens is there is some trick uh, hidden in the constraints that you have to identify and you'll be able to solve it very easily. So the index that is allowed is 2 to n minus 1, right? So that's a good starting point. Uh, that is, we cannot consider every element here. So which elements cannot be considered? For example, first element has uh, no role. Like first element cannot change its position, right? So basically, first, like clear cut, you can just see that observation. If i is starting from 2, first element cannot move, right? So a1 cannot move. Like a1 cannot move from its position. From its position. Whatever is a1, it has to be there, right? And what is our aim? The aim is to sort the array. So even cannot move from its position. Why? Because you can only uh, you can con you can even you can consider the swapping thing only if the index is from second element to the last element, second last element, basically n minus one, right? So basically one to n minus one. You are considering swapping. Basically, you can only consider swapping if an element has both of its neighbors. So basically, uh, even cannot move from this position. That's a simple observation. And if you want the array in sorted position, you have a simple observation that a a one has to be, basically, uh, if not even, I should write first element, uh, if basically first element is not 1, then you can simply print no. You have nothing much, you, you cannot do anything. If first element is not 1, you cannot do anything. Because anyway, first element cannot move, and if you want to sort the array, first element has to be 1. Fine, we're done with first element then. So uh, for this array, luckily, uh, the first element uh, is 1. Now maybe, what is uh, the answer here? OK, first element is 1, then uh, the answer uh, seems to be uh, yes. Fine, but let's see. So anyway, so you can see, for example, here the first element is not 1. First element is not 1. First element is not 1. OK. Here first, uh, OK, so in all these three cases, first element is not 1, the answer is no. OK, so this gives you a hint somewhere, right? So if, if first element is not 1, the answer is no. I'm not saying this is the correct way to go about it. But this is showing you something, right? By just looking at the test case, you can see if the first element is not 1, uh, you are getting no as an answer, right? In these three test cases, you are getting no as an answer clearly. And uh, also in this test cases, right? So even in this fourth test case, you can see in all four of them, uh, one is not the first element and you are getting no. And here, the element is one you're getting yes. Okay, that gives some hint. But that's not concrete, right? That's not concrete enough to like justify. <laughs> it's not uh, like, basically you cannot still uh, say something like, okay, if uh, array of i is zero, Error of a zero, I'll just print yes. By looking at the example, it seems like this should be the case, right? If array of, uh, sorry, huh. if array of zero is one, then print yes, then print yes, else print no. So this seems like to be the solution by looking at the examples, but uh, we are not sure, right? We have we need to get some concrete information. Now fine. So one is its correct position, no issues. Now let's see. If one is in correct position, what is the next element that you should think? Let's think about the largest element. What is the largest element? 5, right? So if 5, uh, you can be sure one thing, right? So we only have this operation at our disposal, right? We have to sort the array. Remember, right? Our aim is to sort the array. Our aim is to sort the array. So 1 is in its correct place. It has to be. A0 has to be 1, right? So we are one thing for sure. If A0 is not 1, then we are definitely going to give no. So I think it's better to write something like this. If A0 is not equals to 1, you can definitely print no. Else part, I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether I should print yes. OK, I'm not sure. Anyway, what is the next uh, easiest thing you can think? Easiest thing is the largest element. Think about 5. The 5 here is at f uh, f is not its correct position. But 5 is the largest element of the array, right? So if 5 is at, let's say, if 5 was here only, if it was 1, 3, 2, 4, 5, then there is no issue 5 was at its correct place. But if right now 5 is not at its correct place, so it's 1, 3, 2, 5, 4. So since 5 is the largest element, uh, it is like, do you agree with me that this condition will always hold for 5, right? So for example, 5 is here, but maybe even if 5 was here, let's say it was 1, 3, 5, 2. Let's say this is the case, 1, 3, 5, 2. So this condition holds for 5, obviously, because it is the largest element of the array. So after one operation, uh, this array will become 1, 3. So you can see uh, AI is greater than both of its neighbors, so AI, move, AI bubbles to the next cell. So 1, 3, 2, 5, right? Anyway, 4 is here. Now. 5 is again the largest, 5 is largest element, so we can again apply, we can again apply the same logic, 1, 3, 2, and 5 will move to the last, 4, 5. So 5 is at its correct place. Now 5 is at its correct place. Good, so 1 is as its correct place, 5 is at its correct place. Now what is the next element you should have, which will be like, think about what will be the easiest element. <laughs> I want to sort the array. What will be the easiest element that can be brought at its correct position? That's the my thinking, right? 
So the question that I ask to myself is, which element can be brought brought to its correct position easily? That's what I asked myself, right? When I saw this question, I asked myself, okay, one is there, one has to be its correct position. But what is the next element? Correct position easily. So I, which can be brought to its correct position easily? The simplest answer I can be mind is five, the largest element. The largest element has to be brought to its correct position. So it can be, so five is in correct position. Now, which element next can be brought to its correct position? Right, so five is there, five is settled where, very nicely. The next element has to be next largest element, right? <laughs> so luckily like four is at its correct position. No issues. What is the next element? Three, right? Three is the next largest element. So can three br be brought to its correct position? Yes, right? Three is again greater than both of its neighbors. So one, two, three, four, five. Right. So, you see what happened here, right? Uh, if the first element is one, <laughs> you can anyway, basically, you can anyway make the array sorted. Uh, if you don't get it, uh, understand like this. So let's say we have a very big array. The first element has to be one, you, sure, you are sure about it. Let's say seven is here. Let's say we have a uh, permutation of size seven, or maybe let's say 10. So 10 is somewhere here, okay? And some elements are there. Let's say some element is here, some element is here, some element is here, fine. And nine is somewhere here, and then so on. Eventually, the last element is something. I don't know what, but last element is something, right? Here, I guess one, two, three. I hope I've not written more dots than that, but fine. So the point is uh, 10 is just the second element. Now, since you know 10 is the biggest element, after some amount of operation, 10 can be slowly bubbled to its correct position, right? After some amount of operations, you can be sure that, uh, you can be sure that after some amount of time, 10 can be easily brought to its correct position. I don't know what will be here. Maybe, uh, let's say, six came here. I don't know how, but fine. Uh, that's not the concern. But the thing is, sin since 10 is the biggest element of the array, it can be brought to the end, right? Now time for nine, time for nine. Think like this, 10 is at its correct position, right? What about this array? What about this array? So 10 is at index 10. Uh, what about this array? This array basically has elements. Uh, which elements does this, this array has? 10 is at its correct position. So elements are one to nine. Elements are one to nine. And which uh, element is one to nine? What is the size of this array? Uh, size of the array, nine. So what is it? This is again a permutation, right? So this part, this part is again a permutation. This part is again a permutation. Now what is the job? The job is to sort this permutation. So again, again, for a first condition, one has to be in its correct place, it is there. Now again, the largest element can be brought to its correct position, right? The largest element can be brought to its correct position. So nine can be brought to its correct position. So it can be made like nine, 10. 9 can be brought to its correct position, right? It can, we can make 9, 10, right? So 9 and 10 are in its correct position. Now what remains? What remains? Uh, it remains that let's say maybe 1 something something, 8 something something. So you have a array of size 8 and elements 1 to 8. The problem, you can see the problem is becoming same, right? You can bring the largest element to its correct position and the problem reduces down to n minus 1. In the n minus 1 sub array, uh, in the n minus 1 uh, array, you can again bring the its largest element to its correct position so on and so forth, right? It, it will go on and eventually you will to sort the array. So I guess uh, if one is at its correct position, we can slowly bring the uh, first largest element, the next largest element, so on and so forth, uh, till n minus one largest elements to its correct position. So in fact, this is the code. This is the code. If array of zero is uh, not equals to one, then no. If the first element is not at its correct position, no, you cannot sort the array. But if it is at its correct position, you can anyway sort the array. How? First, bring the largest element to the end, to its correct position. Then just assume that this array doesn't exist. So we have an array of size n minus one. In this, we can again repeat the same procedure, bring its largest element to the end. So you are getting, right? So let me just run it. This should work. Right, nothing changed. Basically the same output came. I can just uh, remove it and run. Okay, okay, sorry. <laughs> now let me run it. Yes, yes, no, no, no. Fine, I guess uh, it makes sense. All right, let me just submit it and test it. Um, yeah, it works. All right, then um, I'll see you in the next video.